Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Maz back again today with another video for you guys. Today, I'm going to go through showing you how to convert your FCX24 shocks into oil shocks. I know there's a lot of videos out there that already show this procedure, but I have a little bit different way that I do mine. So we're going to check that out and see how that looks today. So this is your stock shock. It is just a friction shock. Real bouncy, real stiff spring, no oil, no O-rings in there to keep oil in it. This is a fully finished shock. So you can see the difference in just the two shocks side by side. You're pretty much talking the whole bottom end is the difference in length with it just sitting rest. So this is not a stock spring. I know a lot of people trim these springs down I don't like this spring because I feel like it's too thick of a wire gauge already. So it's real heavy, real stiff. Um, trimming it down doesn't really change your spring rate so much as it does just give you the droop. So I still think this spring's too stiff and it, you know, you get a ton of coil, you get it almost coil bound at the bottom where this one, you still have plenty of room between the coils. So, the way that I went now, when this is fully extended, it does have about the same, about three coils off of a factory shot or a, a factory spring cut off. I mean, there's probably two millimeters, something like that at the top. We'll set that to the side. And we'll show you how we go about this. So we take our factory uh, shock. First, we're going to turn the top off of it. Don't use pliers and hold the bottom and all that stuff. You don't need to take the top off. There's a hex down in there, 1.5 millimeters. Take your driver of your choice. You know, Maz rocks them MIPs no matter what. Get it in there. Hold the bottom. This is just so much easier than using pliers on the bottom and taking the risk of tearing that shock shaft up. So. Use the hex for what it's for. It comes out. We'll get the driver out of it. Um, first off, once we pull that factory spring off, pull this back through. We can take this out so that we're not fighting it right yet. So we'll take that out. You need to take this cap off. There's little notches on both sides. So you can take anything such as even your little flush cuts. These are just a pair that I beat up and you can kind of get them in there and just pop that cap off. Simple as that. You got the cap on the other side. So then we'll take our we'll take our shock shaft and go back through there. What we're going to want to do at this point is in your bag of parts there's a bag of O-rings. There's small ones and there's big ones. These little small guys and they're real small. These little small guys you're going to use two of them on each shot. So you're going to go down after that cap's removed. You're gonna put the first one on. You're gonna grab your second one. You're gonna put your second one on. And pull them all the way down. You can put a little bit of shock oil on them if you want to beforehand. Take your cap, slide it back over, bring it back down. And you're gonna snap it back down just like that. Once you have it on there, you'll have that assembly. So this is where mine come in to be different. I don't cut those springs like I mentioned before. What I have is a different spring altogether. So this comes from the RC all-wheel drive oil shocks. I have a couple sets of these, but this is a lot softer spring and it's the right diameter. So if we slide that guy over, we take our 
Oh, let's shoot it across the room first. You know, we like doing that stuff. Take our hex driver, get it started in the bottom. We'll go ahead and get the end put on the shot. So we'll screw this all back together. And this way, all we have to do after this is worry about the oil. And I'll show y'all how I go about that. And we'll do that on camera as well. So just screw it until it bottoms out. You don't need to crank down. This is just plastic. And as you can see, that, that spring, once it's on there, is going to sit just right in place. So it fits the top and bottom cups. You can even pull that spring and stretch it a little bit if you want to. I'm not going to worry about that. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your shock oil of your choice and... I'm going to do this on camera, so I'm going to make an absolute mess. You're going to put you a couple drops in and get it started. We're going to start to work it up and down just to get some on the bottom side of that screw. You want to go ahead and work that in before you get too much and start getting it pushing out the top. You don't want to go overkill with this but I do like to get as much of it in there as I can, and then I'll bleed it off. So. As you can see, there's air bubbles. We try to work those out. I don't care what nobody says. If somebody tells you you don't have to worry about air bubbles in these shocks and this, that, and the other, it's just like any other shock with the oil in it. Um, if you don't have to worry about it, you shouldn't have to worry about it on any other one-to-one -one or anything like that. And we know that's not true. So that's about right where we have it right there, just under the bottom. But what you're going to do, when you go to put this top cap on, you have to take your bigger O-ring, this O-ring, sorry guys, that one. And you need to put that around the top of the threads and bring it down to the bring it down just to here and you can see we're about topped out on shock fluid and we're just above when we come up and that's fine so we're going to compress that shock all the way we're going to hold it with one hand we're going to take our sorry guys we're going to take our shock cap and get it started and while compressing the shock completely, we'll tighten that down and it don't have to go crazy. What you do want, you wanna make sure like right there, it feels like right there, it almost stops. I have to force it. So I'm gonna crack that back open. Just about a turn, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna push it all the way back up in there get to where we can grab it. Now that still needs a little bit more. There we go. And what we wanna see is just a little bit of rebound. And you can actually work that shock a little bit. Don't mean to get anybody excited. Kind of work that shock. You'll feel it kind of stiffen up a little bit as you move it, as it works that air and whatnot to the top. We'll pop it one more time. While we're popping it open, we're squeezing the shock down. And once again, we're just snugging the top. There we go, that's the sweet spot when it just goes down just with the tip of your thumb. So, now that is a completed shot. As you can see, it likes to stay in about the middle position, which is what I'm wanting. And then when we put a little weight on here, I'm wanting a lot of droop in my suspension off the gate. So, I like these RC all-wheel drive shocks so far, the way that, or the, not the shocks, but the springs on these shocks. 
but we shall see how that works out. Like I tell y'all in other videos, cleanliness is a big thing. Keep you some alcohol wipes around. These things are awesome because you can just throw them away. You don't have to, you know, get a rag and a bottle and all that. You can buy these on Amazon for like, I don't know, a hundred of them for like $2. It's worth every penny. You can even get them at Wally World or wherever you want to go. But that's going to be my shock setup. So give me just a few. I'm going to get the shocks thrown back on the truck. We'll get the wheels and tires thrown on the truck and we'll see how it sits compared to the uh, how it was stock. So the shocks are on now. And as you can see, usually when this thing comes from the factory, it's like that. I mean, it's up there. It's got all the wheel gap, all that wheel gap. As you can see on this, it now has slow moving shocks, which is what I'm hoping for to help out with some of the uh, nose heavy of it. I'm hoping that that slower front will keep it from just nosing over every time you go downhill. Everybody knows that about these trucks. Um, might want a little heavy on the oil. I use like 30 weight. I could have probably used 20 weight. Um, it's just, you know, testing and tuning. But as you can see right here, you can see right there in front of my finger on this side, you're at probably like 80% droop with the RC all wheel drive oil shock springs on the factory shocks. So that's pretty good for me. Like I said, it has a slow movement up and down, a little slower than I like, but we may pull them back apart at a certain point, and maybe put some 20 weight in them. Hey, I might like it the way it is. Like I said, if you don't drive it, you don't know. So as always, guys, tell me down in the comments if you do something different. Tell me what you think about what, what I did. Also, um, like and subscribe to the channel. Turn that notification bell on so you're notified when Maz puts a video up. Tell me a joke, and until next time, y'all have a good one.